Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and I'm bringing you a painting that we did a study for last weekend, and it's called uh, Stream for the Meadow. This is the 12 by 16 version. Um, I had noticed that it looks like we're missing a bit of the initial paint uh, paint color pass for the sky, and I apologize for that. Um, sometimes I, uh, well, usually what's happening is I've, I've got the camera out, I framed the shot, and I forgot to actually hit record, and uh, I wish it would beep or something, but what it does is it just silently turns itself off. Anyway, um, you get the idea, um, and it's, uh, it's still it's still definitely worthwhile to share this with you um i usually get into this at the end of the uh, uh the video but i want to point out that i have a store on my site now if you're not aware of it please go check it out if you're a subscriber uh one of my youtube to my youtube channel you get a 10 percent discount and um all you need to do is type the words fine art in at the uh, checkout and um I'm adding, I'm trying to add something new every night. Um, it's been a very busy time, so uh, if you don't see something you dig in absolutely right then and there, uh, please come back and check it out later, because I will, I will be putting a lot of paintings up. I really don't have a sense of how much is too much, um, but I have some pretty good inventory, especially on the uh, 5x7 type paintings and those sorts of things. Uh, I think are great because um, it's an original painting um, in some cases I probably uh, I like the uh, 5x7 maybe more than the larger version I've done so um, I'm in my office here I'm looking at all sorts of ones that I thought were choice that I put up on the wall here so anyway that's the commercial portion of this podcast let's get into what's happening in the studio um, I'm still in miniature mode um, I had the idea that I might try and break out of it, but I am sort of following my bliss after a year of, well, maybe not quite an entire year, the better part of a year of prepping for that museum show and doing large work and everything I do. Um, maybe, maybe not all of it was good enough to get into that show, but at least the intention was there. Um. I guess I'm just basically kind of cruising now and doing whatever I feel like doing. And what I feel like doing these days is very small paintings. I've been doing three by threes. I'm phasing out the three by threes, as I mentioned on a couple different videos. Um, I'm getting into three and a half by three and a half, which is still really small, but a little more room for that frame, rabbit of that frame there, which is, you know, taking up a whole basically quarter inch. So, um, I did uh, last week uh, ooh, probably about four or five small paintings, uh, three and a half by five. Um, I did a six by eight and I did a my first three and a half, no, my first two three and a half by three and a half. And uh, that all went great, great. Also, I've been really deep into resurrection mode on um, five by sevens that I've had. Some of them, some of these studies I have going back to maybe 2011. <clears throat> that just well like I said I've talked about this a little bit before but uh, it is what's happening in the studio so forgive me if we get back into it um, some of these paintings are maybe just really really good already uh, they just need maybe a, t a push of, of a lighter area in the sky say or maybe a little bit of shadow area on the ground or something or in some cases they need extensive repainting across the boards and one thing I've been playing with quite a lot and you'll see when I start rolling out the videos for those is uh, just rubbing that whole entire first painting down with burnt sienna or I've also been doing like a um, hands of yellow mixed with a little bit of permanent orange um, in some cases so not everything gets that burnt sienna cast to it uh, the interesting thing is as though after the burnt sienna goes down and I paint I paint things up um, you would almost not, never be able to tell that I'd rub the entire painting down with the burnt sienna it's but what I've done is in, uh, really create a ton of tonal harmony 
and uh, if you're into tonalism you're looking for a shortcut heck you can take almost any painting you have laying around uh, put a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna actually when I say burnt sienna I actually use I think it's called PB 101 it's from Gamblin it's called uh, transparent earth red um, from Windsor and Newton it's called burnt sienna actual burnt sienna is an earth tone that is made from clay and it is only semi-transparent the the say the Windsor Newton version of the burnt sienna or the Gamblin uh, transparent earth red is a transparent color it's an amazing color and uh, I absolutely love it it's probably my favorite color and it was my ground color for years and uh, uh, it's almost magical what, what happens after you do that I mean when you first look at it, you go whoa this is crazy it's all orangey now but you find as soon as you start painting things back up and you'll see in the videos the first thing I'll do is just kind of come in with a bit of a blue in the sky now that blue when I go into it uh, into the sky is not a pure blue it's it's somewhat adulterated and what you'll notice when you rub your painting down with a uh, entire uh, glaze like this is that you do have to adulterate colors otherwise when you lay down the color and it's not in harmony um, it's not in tonal harmony it's very very obvious and uh, that's pretty cool too so uh, as I mentioned in the previous video I know some of you don't get to all the videos so I don't mind repeating myself a bit but I got this technique out of the um, biography of George Ness by his son George Ness Jr and unfortunately actually I recommend reading the book you can get it free online it's easy to find just right just type in Google uh, biography George Ness uh, PDF you'll get it and it's a good read however I wish there was a lot more about uh, George Ness's painting techniques um, his son does talk a little bit about it and this technique that I've been using on these uh, resurrection studies is one of the ones that um, his son outlines in the book and uh, it's a good one I've never really uh, yeah, I can I, I want to say never. I, I, I'm very hesitant to ever do that on one of my paintings when it's a new painting. But uh, in the case of these ones that have been sitting around and I'm just, I don't know, it's really fun because uh, these paintings have been sitting around for a while and I don't have any reference image. I'm not allowing to, myself to have any reference image. I'm just kind of, you know, I've got what's there on the painting and then I've got my imagination and then I've got some approaches that are pretty consistent that uh, you know like the rub down um, either with the burnt sienna or I'm doing it with a Hansa yellow with a little permanent orange to counteract that green uh, reintroduction of blue in the sky uh, and then I restate the darks with the uh, with black um, now for many many years I wasn't really even painting with uh, black in the shadows I was working with um, a mixture of alizarin crimson and phthalo green to get my darkest color and uh, I sort of thought that was darker than black but it's not blacker than black uh, as is pretty evident when I go in with the black over the top but um, it was good it was good uh, actually kind of a holdover from some of the first teachers I ever had uh, who were all impressionists and they were all very anti-black um, and for that reason when I did bring black into my workflow usually it was just to deaden colors or to uh, uh, so if something was too bright and too saturated I would add some black to kind of bring it in line it, so it would look more natural and I've been using black in that way for about three or four years um, but I was still painting my darkest areas of my painting with this uh, Thalo Green Alizarin Crimson mix, uh, which I've abandoned. And one of the reasons I abandoned it is just I'm after a bit of a older look. And um, these older painters, people like Ines and John Francis Murphy and uh, Charles Warren Eaton, they weren't using Thalo Green mixed with Alizarin Crimson. They were using just plain old black, you know, and uh, maybe mixing other colors into it. Um, which I do as well. I also uh, use a lot of uh, raw umber, especially say if I have uh, dark areas that are in the distance, I won't paint those with the black because I want them uh, to recede 
Um, that's a trick. Uh, of course, I wish I'd, you know, wish I'd started doing years, years before I finally started doing it. And it, I always feel so silly because when you look at the work of a lot of successful artists, it's obvious that they're doing that. They're pushing their background elements further back by making sure things aren't too dark. Um, or they're, in some cases, they're scumbling, um, which is a, a technique where you take maybe a color like, I don't know, yellow ochre uh, or uh, some white, uh, some gray, and uh, you rub it down over areas that uh, you want to uh, seem with, have a little hazy, a little faded, a little distant. Um, and uh, and you, white rub, you rub it down and in some of my videos you'll see me putting it down and you say oh my god he just ruined the painting but then I wipe it off and then I just bring it back up a little bit with some paint and uh, that's a very powerful technique and I have to uh, confess I'm doing that more and more and uh, you know I kind of thought that technique was a bit uh, I don't know just I, I, I was aware of it I just wasn't really using it but uh it's definitely worth using. It's a great technique, and uh, I use it all the time now. So, the studio, um, back into that. Uh, like I said, mi doing miniatures still, um, and uh, resuscitating, reviving, and resurrecting a bunch of 5x7s, which I am, of course, uh, as is my habit, I'm videotaping that process. And... Um, going to share those with you. I already shared one. If you look at, I think it's the second or third tonalist minute, you'll see there's a five by seven there of a tree in a field. Um, and it was, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd originally grabbed like 14 to 20 uh, five by sevens and um, was just going to freshen them up for online sales. But um, got really, really fun. And so I thought, well, heck, I got a lot more paintings I could definitely improve you know, there's, uh, there's some that I leave alone I don't mess with. It's good, I think, to have some of your work that's sitting around that, that's a reflection of um, how you were working at the time you did it. I don't, I'm so I'm not uh, going to constantly be repainting the same hundred paintings over and over. But uh, in some sense, I do think it's very good to do that, especially if you've got, um, uh, I don't know, a painting uh, that's been uh, in, uh, in storage or whatever, and uh, you look at it and you know, wow, I could just put a little more oomph in the sky and a little more shadow here or there and a little more color and this and that. And it's fun as, I tell you, I love it. Um, the uh, the only downside is, is that I've been so into that, I haven't really been doing as many of the uh, new paintings as I could, but... I, you know, I'm prolific, so it's no worry. I'm going to keep rolling along and uh, following my bliss, I guess, so to speak. Um, the other thing I've really been involved with is I'm now on um, Instagram. <clears throat> you can follow me on Instagram. It's Tonalist Painter. It's at Tonalist Painter. Um, mostly the things I'm sharing on Instagram I'm, uh, are things that I've already sharing on my blog and on my channel. Um, in some cases not, and uh, uh, there may be uh, cases on Instagram uh, where I might just grab something that I've shared either on YouTube or on my blog um, in the past. I think Instagram is really awesome though, and um, it's great how many awesome artists are out, are out there, and you know, just to start investigating the hashtag of uh, tonalism, you see all kinds of great stuff out there and it's wonderful to see um, modern artists working in that vein and uh, uh, if you're one of them find me on um, on Instagram and, and follow me and I'll follow you back for sure uh, I just think it's a great positive uh, feedback loop and in a lot of ways um, it works certainly working better than for me than, than Facebook but I think that's because Facebook is designed to do so many different things whereas Instagram's really about about images so being a painter I'm about images too anyway I see we're getting close to the end hey if you'd enjoyed this video please click subscribe I really appreciate it when people do that I think it's awesome and uh, I'm making my uh, best attempt to grow this channel and uh, it's awesome to know that people are enjoying the content getting some from it um, 
also you can go to my website uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video I've got a store there now that's landscapepainter.co.nz there'll be a link popping up at the end of this video too and uh, I will be back tomorrow with a tonalist minute so it's all tonalism all the time here with M. Francis Fine Art so thanks for joining me we'll see you tomorrow meanwhile take good care and stay out of trouble